Hello everyone. So now that we have learned about plus i effect and minus i effect, I hope you understand all of those concepts. So in this video, we are going to talk about the various questions regarding that. So we are going to basically start with acidic character of carboxylic acid. So you'll find this question as very very common question in your exams and at a lot of places that they'll give you certain carboxylic acid and ask you which one is more acidic so we'll start with some examples okay so example number one is your H C double bond O and OH then another one I think we have done this in the last class remember COH means this is structure okay and then the next one is CH3, CH2, COOH. So basically here two carbons are attached, here one carbon is attached. So you'll have to find the acidic character. So to find the acidic character, as I've talked already with you guys, that if we want to find the acidic character, we can check the stability of the conjugate base. So what happens when this gives an H plus? What will happen? Uh, CH3 COO minus will come right which whose structure will be this right so, and this negative charge will be in resonance so due to that as we already know uh, this is already stabilized by resonance so if the stability of this is more then the reaction will go forward right because everything wants to get more stable right so <clears throat> so basically for that to happen this negative charge should be stable and due to resonance the negative charge become partially here and partially here partially here so which decreases the density and when charge density is less charge density is less stability increases so we have to check which of these are decreasing the charge density as you can see CH3 is a plus I effect group so it will give an electronic charge to CO minus the conjugate base like in this case so basically and this will give more plus I right so what they are doing is they are increasing the charge density which will decrease the stability when the stability is decreased then this will not be more acidic so that is why the most acidic in this case is the first one HCOO OH greater than second greater than third I hope you understood it the next one uh, your next example is uh, so let us now see these three examples the first example as you can see this will give plus I effect right here at the same time this is doing the minus I effect and NO2 is doing minus I effect so minus I effect will decrease the negative charge density which will come on oxygen so which will make it more stable and at the same time more acidic so a conjugate base will be more stable and the thing will be more acidic so here as we can see by this easily we can do c greater than b greater than a because in minus i effect we are going to compare the minus i effect of fluorine and no2 and as we have already discussed the minus i effect series so you must have understood it very easily the next one is this you have same number of carbon same number of carbons here attached to COOH we have this minus I effect showing CL group so what will happen here so here which one is more more stable or at the same which one is more acidic so here B is more acidic in A the reason being that uh, here as I've already said to you that plus I effect and minus I effect are distance dependent so due to the fact as your minus I effect goes further down the carbon chain it is it shows less minus i effect okay so b is more stable than b is more acidic than a then this is your this is in this structure you will have to tell that which one has so every edge shows a carbon atom right here in this structure so this basically show a single bonded carbon atom to coh double bonded and a triple bonded atom so which one do you think is the most stable so same time minus i effect will increase plus i will effect will decrease as we already learned and minus i effect will increase the stability at the same same time the acidic nature so as we can see here this shows the greatest minus i effect alkyne group 
then double bond then single bond so the order will be just easy right uh, let's see few more questions I would say so we understand it way better so let's try let's see a, a good one and then we'll move on forward because I think we have already done a lot of questions on this topic okay so you have to remember this is structure this is straight line structure basically meant that every edge is a carbon atom I think you must have learned it while in nomenclature that is why I'm not teaching it and if you want to learn it by me write down in the comments okay and I'll try to make a whole video on isomerism and nomenclature our final question for today is uh, is this and then we'll move on to mesomeric effect so our final question is CH3CH CH F in order COH okay at the same time I'm not going to put hydrogen you can just add up hydrogen by your own uh, as per the bond structure so let's just make it C C C C O H again and here F and NO2 then another time C C C okay C C O H now F and NO2 are on the same carbon then another time C C C C O H so you have to compare these four sorry for my handwriting so let's start so I'll give you five seconds try to write down your answer yourself and then let's check if your answer is right and match with mine or not so the most stable here is D or the most acidic car COH is D then it's B then it's A and then C why so in D as you can see both fluorine chlorine and nitrogen dioxide group is same is the closest and then in the B as you can see a fluorine remember if you have distance like uh, it's easy to understand between these two so let's just do between A and B first so as you can see in A and B here fluorine is closer but as I have already talked that nitrogen dioxide shows more minus I effect so it should be closer right so B is greater than A that you understood secondly you understood why D is greater than all of them and why C is the least, least stable then whenever you have to compare between distance and minus I effect the more closer the distance is the better it is okay so that's why that wins so yeah now now at the same time inductive effect have an additive property so it can get added so as we have done in this question right I was just checking my notes so that I don't miss anything so let's rub all of it. Let's just rub everything here. And maybe we'll just do this. Yeah. Uh, we'll do this. And like this. Yeah. So now we are going to talk about mesomeric effect. Really, really important effect. We have already talked about it several times so mesomeric effect is basically the permanent displacement of your pi electron due to the due to the presence of conjugation is known as mesomeric effect there are two types of mesomeric effect it is also called as resonance effect so it basically happens because of resonance okay so we have already talked about how resonance takes place and all but now we have to understand when we compare different compounds how we can say that this compound shows more resonance and this one bound as less so there are two types of mesomeric effect or resonance effect plus m or plus r you can call any of that minus m or minus r same as we already learned in plus and plus i and minus i this will be electron pulling such as as minus i was pulling electron towards elect itself or electron withdrawing effect and this one is electron donating effect electron donating effect uh, so we are going to let's start with the plus m effect so firstly it's electron donating effect so what basically happens here if this group is in conjugation so it might have negative charge or lone pair electron as we have talked so it is donating electron to the carbon atom and the negative charge will go there as we learned earlier so the group which shows plus m effect increases the electron density right so ring but mainly at the ortho and para positions so in case of in case of in case of a benzene 
these are known as para this is the para and these are your ortho position so what ha basically happens is in case of benzene if you add any electron donating group such as phenol you call this phenol so what it will do it will give the electron here and this electron will go here and then in conjugation it will go here so as you can see if we draw the resonating structure the electron is only going to ortho these two positions this negative charge is only going to these two positions in the benzene ring and this lower position not this position these two positions are known as meta these two are your ortho and this is your para position so that is why electron density increases as uh, at ortho and position pa ortho and para so that is why it is also known as ortho para directing or activating groups okay but uh, at the same time if you see a uh, x group x here we are talking about halogen fluorine fluorine bromine iodine this is a deactivating group deactivating group deactivating group which means your electron will go out of the ring rather than going in it does not show plus m effect it show because yeah, here the plus m here there are two effects going on right always remember plus m is dominant over minus i but in the case of halogen minus i gets dominant over plus m effect so due to which this will try to pull electron toward itself rather than pushing electron into the ring okay then we come on to the our next, next next effect which is also known as the which is also known as the minus i effect so similarly i'm going to talk about it just so minus i effect are shown by two types of things first one first one is where key atom key atom is connected to connected to electronegative element through multiple bond we're going to talk about it don't worry so this is basically functional group shows minus i effect and the second one is key atom contains a positive charge so if if key atom has such as okay if key atom has your a plus n and minus m effect will talk majorly in the benzene ring so if your key atom has a positive charge then it will withdraw electron at the same time if you have functional groups such as cunh2 or any other functional group attached to our benzene ring so what is basically happening is in electronic electronegative element is attached to this carbon which is attached to this benzene so due to this minus i this will try to pull electron and a resonance effect will show so basically due to that did you that if key atoms is connected to an electronegative element then it can show minus m effect okay this is also known as deactivating effect or deactivating group and both plus m and minus m are ortho para directing there is nothing such as meta directing okay and what happens is minus i effect basically decreases your minus i effect what basically is to uh, let's see it decreases your electron so it will go there, positive here, it will go there, and, oh sorry, 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 it will go positive here, and this will go there, okay? So what it does is basically, minus i effect decreases the electron density from all positions, but uh, the positive charge, as you can see, positive charge goes on knee onto your ortho and para position. That is why this is also known as meta-directing in nature. Why is it meta-directing? Because electron densities Although we can say that electron is decreasing on ortho para, then we can say relatively electron will be more on meta positions, right? Negative charge is more on meta position. So charge density is more on meta position. That's why it is meta directing. Okay. Although the positive charge has been directing directed to ortho and para positions. Okay. So 
So plus M and minus F effect, they are both ortho and para directing, but it is known as minus M is meta directing in nature because it increases the electron density. Here we are talking about where electron density is more. In plus M, as it was donating electron, the electron density was more in ortho and para position. In minus M, as it was withdrawing electron, so electron de density decreases on ortho and para positions, which eventually increases, which where we can say that relatively it is more on meta position. So yeah, that is it for your resonance or mesomeric effect. We are going to go into our next effect in the next lecture, which is hyperconjugation, really important and really fun effect. And after that, we are going to do a lot of exceptions and a lot of, not a lot of exceptions, uh, they are part of our theory and we are going to talk about a lot of questions very, very much. So yeah, you are going to enjoy all of it. We are going to talk about a lot of exception, uh, ortho effect and a lot more. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye. Have fun. Keep studying and keep working hard.